Hey everybody. Hey, I really felt that I needed to come out here and give a medical update um, as there are many questions to what happened and a little bit more of an update from this morning's video as well, okay? So first, I'll start with when I put out that plea for a cry for a prayer. <laughs> Thank you all for coming forth and oh, prayer is so much more needed. All right, and I didn't have any answers either. And so what happened was, first we'll go to the the most popular question. What did you do? How did you fall? <laughs> All right. So what had happened was I had just gotten home from getting groceries. And, of course, the pups are always excited when I get home. And they know when I come home that they're going to get treats. And as I was about to put my phone down on the coffee table, um, thank goodness I decided to keep it in my hand. But I didn't realize how close I was to the leg of the coffee table. So when I turned around to walk away from it, my little toe, nail actually, um, hit the leg of the coffee table and down I went. Now, any time else I would have put my hands out to try to catch myself. But um, I remembered hearing something about don't do that, you could break your wrist. Okay, <laughs> well, actually, that was my best option because there was a doggy bed there, but I, hindsight and not being able to think fast enough, and I landed on my hip. So, thank goodness I had the phone in my hand, and I was listening to a good message and actually texting a sister. Um, I sat there for about 15, 20 minutes, and okay, well, nothing swelled up, and then I decided to try to get up, and oh, at that point, that's when I went down and stayed down. And I pretty much went into shock, I think, as the pain was excruciating, huh, very excruciating, and I was shaking all over. Um, so I had the phone in my hand, and I went ahead and called. I was going to call 911, but I went ahead and called my daughter. My daughter came over. And when she did, she insisted that I go to emergency room right away. But you know Miss Stubborn here, right? Um, I wanted outside, sit down, let's help me outside. Let me sit down for a few minutes, gather myself together, figure out what just happened, and, and see if I can deal with this because I do have a high pain tolerance, as you know. Oh, well, okay, so I ended up... Um, this was probably about 10 o'clock this happened, maybe 9.30, and it was 10.30 when my daughter got there, um, and it was 3.30 when I decided that was okay, I need to go. <laughs> that was an excruciating pain. Not knowing what was going on, I immediately posted on Facebook and on the community here about my need, but I didn't know what was going on. Okay, so that's how I felt. Then when I got here, uh, they did everything they could and found out what it was and sonograms and everything and found out that I had fractured my hip. But that was what was crazy was that I was sitting there going, well, if it's my hip, then why is it hurting from the inside? But it was in the groin area that it was fractured. So that's okay. Okay? Well, it's not okay, but it's okay. And so that explains some things right there, right? When you get some answers to things. So I had surgery yesterday. So you understand that I was only here, like, you know, for a little while before I could eat. I had, like, one little meal yesterday. Then I couldn't, not yesterday, the day before. And then I couldn't eat yesterday because of surgery. And surgery went well. Very well, actually, they said. And and I went well. <laughs> that was good. And yes, I asked all the right questions before as well. And what they were going to do and how they were going to do things. I wanted to make sure. Um, so then after surgery, of course, you know, you get upstairs and you're kind of groggy and I got to eat last night, but not too much, and I didn't really get to sleep, because what was happening was when I was sleeping, it seemed like 
the Lord was waking me up and I would get like half awake. Let's see, this happened five times. So let, let me say also that the number five and the number 10 have been coming up everywhere for the past couple days. I mean, everywhere, like five o'clock this morning, five times that I woke up, uh, I'm in room 406, that make 10, right? So everything's been in increments of five or 10. All right, so then, um, okay, at five o'clock this, okay, when I was gone, when I was woken up that few times, and I wanted you to check these out, I'm going to put some more video links in under there, all right, so first of all, understand that Debbie did not fall on purpose, and of course, I wouldn't do that, and it was an accident, but all glory goes to God, because this is his story, for his glory, all things happen for a reason, I believe that, and and it was just an accident and just something that happened, all right? So it wasn't anything, of course, that I wasn't watching and taking care of myself or anything like that. And you know the how they are in the hospitals, you know, when they ask you a thousand questions and <laughs> have I fallen before? Yeah, okay, 20 times. Be sure, I'm, I'm fine. I've never broke anything, all right? Um, okay, so anyways, okay, so waking up, the five times last night and half asleep and half awake it was like the lord was telling me to pray for israel and so i kept praying and praying for israel and then i would fall back to sleep and then i woke up again and then half awake and i was led to pray for any unforgiveness in my heart as there had been a few things that had been said to me this past week that have really troubled me and I guess I I still had unforgiveness to deal with and not that it's a salvation issue remember we talked about that it just affects your walk and your witness right so I started praying and asking the Lord to show me and he did he was faithful to do so and I begged for forgiveness not begged but you know what I'm saying and I prayed for forgiveness um, as the Father says, that he will forgive us as we forgive others, right? So I wanted to make sure that uh, I was there. And then as I was praying, you know, and crying, I would fall back to sleep. And again, I would wake up. And this happened, okay, so then I, okay, I would wake up. And the Lord had on my heart to pray for Israel again. So I continued to pray for Israel some more. They're her people, his people. His people, actually, the apple of his eyes surrounding her borders. And and I knew he would, and I praised him for it. And he's so awesome, and he's so big, and he's so amazing. All of them. Every single bit of them. He's, I think we put him in a box sometimes, and we carnally try to figure him out. And we carnally try to think things out when, you know, we're humans. We're humans. We're spiritual beings having humans' experiences, but we're not of this world. We're just in it. Yet, because we have flesh, you know, we tend to fall that way sometimes, and that's understandable, but we've got to stay in the Spirit. That's what he tells us, to stay in the Spirit. So, then the fourth time I got woken up, again, I was praying for unforgiveness in my heart and I was also praying for those that I love that aren't saved or those you know that are in the world that aren't saved and oh my goodness I had such a heaviness like I just knew I know that we're in a season I've been talking about that in my last few videos that it was like so close at that moment it was like wow I just was coming to the realization that this was happening. And so I'm praying for like the whole world at this point. So then the fifth time he woke me up, it was at five o'clock. Now this time I was awake. And I, honest to goodness, know his voice. And I heard the Lord say, remember 9-11? And then I, I went, Yes, Lord, I do. And then through my mind, I started remembering that I only had a chance yesterday, as I'm still watching regardless, right, um, to watch a couple of videos. And 
take a peek on Twitter. And I saw that President Trump had done that and with the churches and stuff. And then I kind of gasped a little bit. And I said, Lord, I said, when the revival happened, when everybody went back to church and and all these other things, you know, and, and what's happened since then as we've been on a, a spiral downfall ever since and all the chaos that's been in the world and, you know, and, well, we know that distractions will make you lose traction. And as of the past month or so, we've been like going crazy, right? Trying to keep our eyes everywhere. That's why we are one body with many members and we all have different parts and different portions and we share these things with each other so i want to share that that uh, is what happened um when the lord shared that with me and oh my goodness it was like i just wow i was like odd i was like in real awe at that moment and i was like lord what do you want me to do it's like what I really wanted to do was go to sleep. And it was, I really, really, really believe the Lord told me to pick up the phone and put that video up. So it wasn't very clear because I was so Holy Spirit filled and still crying a little bit when, well, you heard it. And it wasn't from pain or anything like that whatsoever. Um, well, since then, Sister Holly puts out a video and she had the meaning for today that I had looked at but hadn't had a chance to research. And, and she had some things on there that I'm going to link it to. And then, wouldn't you know, <laughs> how awesome is our God? A brother sends me a link to a video um, that happened to be the same person's video that I linked underneath, only it was a different video. It was from today. And he was talking about certain things, and uh, well, I won't give it away, but one of the things that he said in specific was that he had been transported to New York City when he saw the earthquake happen, um, or whatever, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it for you to decide and go in there and listen, because I'll leave that link as well. So there again, a 911 connection, right? And also in Sister Holly's video, there was an, a comment that I saw that a lady, somebody, a sister said that she had woken up to hearing 911 today. Okay, so many of us think carnally sometimes and, or whatever, and we think, well, it could mean this, it could mean that, and, and what are you trying to say, Lord? I mean, I get all that. We all go through that, right? That letting God work and letting him handle it out and having him show you and asking him you know, to show you what he means because he talks to each one of us differently, right? In a way that we would understand. Um... So I know, you know, we've all been seeing numbers and, and things like this, right? Okay, so, you know, the thing was is that the Lord really wanted me to make it urgent that we, that he is at the door, that he is about ready to send his son, and that we are in the season, and that the 9-11 was about the revival. Now, Sister Holly has a different translation as well. And hers is really good, as I was, like I said, was going to look up what I heard on the calendar or, or saw on the calendar. Sorry about that. And wanted to know what it was. But thank you, sister, for, for doing that for me. And so she understands what's happening today, too, um, with all that. And she can, you can get more information over there on that. And then the brother, I'm making that video today. What was it? What were the odds of my brother, um, David, sending me that? And, wow. Anyways, God is awesome. And he's bigger than we think he is and know he is. And sometimes we put him in a box. But he is, man, he uses the earth as his footstool. How big is that, right? He's a big God. He's so big. He's amazingly big. We don't put him in a box, brothers and sisters. And he is in control of all things in heaven and in earth and all of this is his story for his glory and it's all for a reason and i'm not going to question him and and or his reason right now as he'll show me i believe it i asked him and i believe he will 
And right now I've been able to to witness to a few, talk about Jesus. I've seen that, you know, a few people are actually awake. And um, so that's been good. So despite everything else that's going on here, I mean, it's been a chaotic mess, that is for sure. And I've had some some highs where people have been real positive with me. And then I've got some real lows and right now you know they decided to send the physical therapist in at nine o'clock this morning like i said there's a nine for judgment right <laughs> um and i was just getting my breakfast and hadn't been awake yet and i was awake still and so my walking didn't take me down the hallway sprinting like i wanted to and i was too weak in my upper body strength that's where i'm disabled from and I told them that. So we didn't get very far. But then again, I had to go to the little girl's room a few minutes ago. And the nurse was able to bring me in. I was able to use the walker. And yes, she had to help me a few times. I'm just not strong enough yet um, to get there. But what they're trying to talk to me about is going into a rehab. But I have people at home. I have my grandson that would be able to stay with me for a week. I have uh, the lady I babysit for who's able to come by, the lady that um, that I'm teaching English and who cleans my house that's willing to come over uh, to help. And I have neighbors. My, my daughter can help on some certain things. So I obviously won't be driving or, or doing anything like this for a while, right? <laughs> but who knows? God is in control, and I am a woman of faith. And I believe the report of the Lord that by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. So I really didn't want to specifically name anything as I was getting um, <clears throat> the doctor's views on what it could be. And she didn't know. And of course, <laughs> uh, her report was really bad. And that's not what it was anyway. So praise be to God. But to go in a rehab According to them, well, we all think, I think I know where that came from. But Satan, you're under my feet. I stomp on your little head as you are nothing. And you're meaningless in our lives. And you have nothing. Jesus wins and you know it and your time is short. And I declare that in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Jesus, for your hedge of protection around me and the blood of Jesus. And I thank you all for your prayers. And I pray that you continue praying as they're throwing a few loops my way right now and that I just handle them gracefully, handle them in love, handle them in the right way, okay? As Christians, we should do the right thing at all times. But, you know, sometimes when people, I, I guess I want to say, tick us off, <laughs> uh, I know me, myself, I could respond back quicker than I can think sometimes. And I'm learning that. But when you're talking about putting me somewhere for a while, now, okay, all the fences come up at that point, all right? Give me a break here. Give me a day or two, okay? Anyways, before we even talk about that, I guess is what I wanted to say. So um, other than that, I think I've answered all the questions. No, I haven't. I've got one more. All right, so I see that I have a whole bunch of texts, and I went into my email land for a minute today, and I see I have a whole bunch of emails, and I just have to tell you that I have not had enough rest or enough energy, and I'm going to take a nap right now uh, to be able to get back to you. So please be patient with me and know that I love each and every single one of you with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. I don't know what I would do without you all. But I know that Jesus is at the door. I know he is. I know that we're in the season. I know, I just know, um, I can't say the day or the time. Of course not. And nor would I do that. But I know he's very close. And in the meantime, we occupy, we pray, and our, the bride makes herself ready, right? So as we're making ourselves ready, and we're making sure that we are, you know, only Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness when we repent. 
No, I had to forgive uh, today. And then I remember, my goodness, I preach to myself sometimes when I'm preaching and I listen back to my videos. And I've said that to y'all sometimes on how the hardest thing you ever have to do is forgive someone who's never asked for forgiveness before. And how, well, sometimes we just forget ourselves and, and or don't. And I preach to myself. When I listen to myself back, I go, wow, did I really say that? Well, now i got to practice what I just said, right? Um, and so it's also, you know, for me that I'm speaking these things out. So, and as far as the neck is concerned, okay, that's the other thing, is... Of course, they came in right away, and I had shared with you all that I have a crushed C1, right? Now, they're saying that it's a broken C1. I do not know what they're going to do about that, and I don't think they're going to act on it right now. Um, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, but <laughs> I believe the report of the Lord, and I believe that he's coming very, very soon. So with that, I said it all, right? I said as much as I can. Okay, no, I haven't. All right, the dogs. Everybody's worried about my four kids. I know, me too. <laughs> I love them so much. Oh, I miss them so much. This, this is horrible. Anyways, Dora and Molly are with my youngest because they know her and Jordan very well. And they're doing well. And Maddie has gone to Jen's. And so they're all taken care of, all right? And Jennifer's stopping by the house daily to feed my squirrels and, and my birds. <laughs> so they're all getting taken care of too. And they're taking care of things there and helping me out at the same time. So I do have a lot of help, most possibly, but I have to work through this to get there, all right? So please continue to pray as I say that this is Debbie from Texas. And I'm saying peace out, Maranatha. Let's keep looking up, brothers and sisters. Our king is coming. Hallelujah.